Hey everybody, Happy New Year! If in fact I am the first person to wish you a Happy New Year on today, January 1st, 2015. Probably unlikely, but you never know. I might have got a couple of hits out there. Happy New Year, everybody. As today, Rado runs through his top 10 most anticipated games of 2015. Hey, it's New Year. Time for a new list of a bunch of new games that look Hella cool. Well, I'm going to be walking you through them. Now, this is actually a geek list that I maintain throughout the year. I am constantly, every time I discover a new interesting game that looks exciting to me that I think Jen and I will enjoy, I research about it and I throw it onto this geek list. I mean, you know, all the way through the year, right up until the very, very end. In part, as literally a memory aid for me, because there are so many good games coming out these days, it's kind of hard to keep them all straight. So, I, you know, this is kind of where I keep my thoughts of why I'm interested in X or Y or Z. But I also, you know, make it public so that everybody else can um, subscribe to this list if they want and get notifications throughout the year every time I find a game that's of interest. And now, of course, bear in mind if you're at all familiar with my show, of interest to me means that it has to support two players. It has to be be relatively low conflict, although there's always some exceptions to that rule, and it has to be full of Euroweek goodness. So this is really going to be me talking about my top 10 most interested, anticipated, excited games as of right now. Now, I should say, this list has 70 games in it. And I could, in fact, spend the next two hours going through all 70 of these games right now. But quite frankly, that's absolutely insane. I'm just going to do the top 10. Um, but if you would like to know about the rest of them, you can follow the link that's down you know, off the bottom of the screen in the show notes. And you can go to this page. Hey, you can follow along with me right now if you want. I'll wait. No, I'm not done waiting. But anyway, you can go there and you can read about all 70. And heck, by the end of the year, it'll probably be 170 or 270 interesting games. Actually, one more thing I should say. This is um, this list of 70 that's in this geek list right now. That's not everything. If you look right here in the header, you know, and here's links to my the one I've done this list for 2012, 2013, 2014 as well. I've actually got a link to my wish list. My wish list is actually composed of hundreds and hundreds of games that I'm really, really interested in. And I'm just taking, for this run-through, the top 10 of... There you go. And, but the, in the geek list are basically all the games that I have ranked must-have, love-to-have, or like to have. So basically everything I've rated a 1, 2, or 3 is in that geek list. But there's a bunch more as well because you get down into the 4s where you've got, um, there's 4s, you get into the thinking about it. Now I'm not putting thinking about it onto this geek list, but there's a whole bunch of them as well. So if you'd like, you can uh, you know learn even about even more games. But enough preamble, let's actually start going through, and uh, see, this is actually in reverse order, uh, so I gotta scroll down, don't peek, don't peek, All right, okay, so, here, actually, here we are, 25, 23, sorry, uh, Dark Horse, Rebel and Rogue, sorry, Perfect Storm Alaska, Acute Care, uh, Pandemic State of Emergency, you know, blah, 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 we're not here to talk about them, Guilds of London, oh, just barely made it at number 11, but let's now start with my number 10, most anticipated game of 2015 as of today. Remember, this list will be constantly updating as as uh, as the year goes on. My number 10. Oh, by the way, I should say also number 11, number 12. None of the rest of these are in any kind of anticipatory order. Uh, I only just when I was making this geek list, I arranged the first 10 to be my 10 most anticipated right now. Throughout the year, I'm not going to be keeping that up. Everything is anticipated. But if you want to know exactly, you can go back to the geek list where everything I really, really want is a one. Everything I kind of want is a three, etc., etc. But anyway, here we go. Enough waffling. Number 10 most anticipated game as of January 1st. Fresco, the card game. And yo, I gotta say. I've been anticipating Fresco the card game, it feels like, for years now. Fresco itself is, um, I believe, in Jen's top 10 games of all time, and I'm pretty sure it's in my top 20. We love, love, love Fresco. There it is right there. Uh, hollowed space on my shelf. It'll never go away. We love the game. It's so great. I've done a run through for it. You can see that. Uh, ever since Fresco the card game got announced, at least two years ago, I have been waiting with bated breath. And you can see that this is on every um, you know anticipated or games of interest geek list I've done. 
Fingers crossed, this will be the year that Queen Games stops teasing with this game because I would love to have a fast-playing, portable version of Fresco that we could take with us anywhere. I mean, that just sounds absolutely awesome. So, fingers crossed, this is the year that my number 10 most anticipated game comes out, Fresco the Card Game. Now, let's move on to number 9. Do, 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 do. Foragers. Okay. Unfortunately, no image as yet. Um, that, that, say la vie. You know, this is early days. I uh, can't wait to see what the art is. But more importantly, I can't wait to see what this game is. Because last year, 2014, my gosh, Steve Finn, the designer, Steve Finn of Dr. Finn Games, was on fire. He just kept putting out great filler game after filler game after filler game. I mentioned a couple of them right here. Biblios, Biblios Dice, Copy to Copy, uh, Institute of Magical Arts. Well, actually, Institute of Magical Arts is well, kick-started in 2014. It'll be coming out in 2015 as well. In fact, it's later. It's further down on my list. It would be higher, except I've already played it, so I'm not anticipating as much because I already know how much I enjoy it. Foragers, I'm very excited about. This is a design he's been working on for a long time. It's been an item in Board Game Geek forever. So, fingers crossed, again, this is going to be one that comes out. It's about cavemen, or you know, uh, Neolithic era man, foraging for goods, trying to you know, keep a uh, successful um, uh, wait, colony going, or not colony, uh, village, tribe, whatever you want to call it. And you know, that's a great theme, obviously. It's in the wildly successful, hugely popular Stone Age. Um, but I would love a Dr. Finn brilliantly designed filler with that type of subject matter. Because Stone Age is is good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we like Stone Age quite a bit, but um, you know, I I, th I think it's a great theme that deserves more love. So Foragers is my number nine. Cannot wait to learn more about it. And again, that's off the strength of last year. I mean, Steve just kept knocking them out of the park. We enjoyed everything he has done. He has catapulted himself into one of my top ten favorite designers. Spoiler alert: If I ever do a top ten designer list, but anyway, that's number nine. Now let's move on to number eight. D -d 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 ships. Okay, this was actually supposed to come out in 2014. It was supposed to be at Essen, and it was heartbreaking that it didn't make it. You know, Mythotopia was there. Um, onward. To Venus was there. Ships was supposed to be the third. I mean, you know, Martin Wallace, the you know, the most excellent and acclaimed designer of wonderful, heavy, great, great euros, uh, is basically returning to what we love the most. It's been a while since he's done one of these big, heavy economic simulations like. Uh, brass or automobile or something like that, and I'm very very excited about this because this game will, uh, you know, supposedly. Although I don't know much at this point, I mean, pretty much I've written right there everything I know is all about tracing the um, the evolution of ships and shipping throughout mankind's uh, across three eras. You know, where's the star? I, I wrote it down here because I thought it just sounded really cool. Um, from galleys to galleons to modern day steamers or almost modern day. I guess it's not quite modern day but you know turn of the century type stuff oh, I, I'm just super stoked for this because we have loved brass so much we have loved uh, railways of the world I mean we just you know um, and my only worry about this as I say right there is Martin Wallace he does have a tendency to give maybe a little bit less attention to the two player experience than he perhaps should I mean, heck, Brass is officially only a three-player game, and it's only because fans found, hey, you know what, this game can play great two-player. And Mar I mean, Martin Wallace, I remember reading at one point, he said, you know what, I'm not even going to bother with the two-player design on whatever game it is. I, I know the fans will come up with one. So I'm a little nervous about this one because, I mean, he just is less interested in two-player, focusing on the two-player element, but his games are so good. Oh, I can't wait to find out more about my number eight, Ships. Now, moving on to number seven. Ah, Nippon. Let's see. Last year, not last year, the year before, 2013, had the most excellent Madeira came out from... Um, oh, I should have written down the names of the designers of all this. I'm sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, a couple of Portuguese uh, design team. Um, you know, Madeira made my top ten of 2013. Loved it, as I say, right there in the text. Last year, those guys teamed up um, with Gilles O'Reilly and... Oh, i got to look up their names now. That I mentioned Gilles' name. i got to mention their name, too. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Close that tab. Where are they? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nuno, Bizarro, uh, Sintiero, and Paolo Soledad. You know, the, you know, Madeira was fantastic. Last year, they teamed up with Gilles and put out Panamax, which was also a brilliant game. So these guys 
are um, you know they're they're on a hot streak. They're really um, putting out some really high quality stuff, and so that's why I'm very excited about their next big game, Nippon, which, if I recall correctly, is going to be once again from What's Your Game, which I've I've waxed rhapsodic about them quite a bit. They seem to be on a hot streak too. And I just love the idea of this. A very heavy economic simulation about the Industrial Revolution, not in Europe, not in England, not even in America, which is where you always see it, but the Industrial Revolution in Japan. I don't even know what that means, but I am very attracted by that theme. And I am very, very excited because of the designer's recent track record. So Nippon makes number seven. Moving on to number six. Uh, Artifacts Inc. Um, uh, Ryan Lockett, and I, I believe that's how I pronounce the name. I think I pronounced it incorrectly in the past. My mistake, and my, my apologies, Ryan, for uh, goofing up your name. But I believe it's Ryan Lockett, although it looks like Lacat. It looks like, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, oh, I'm not going to anyway, Ryan Lockett, he has done several games. And in fact, I've even gotten that wrong before. I've forgotten how many games he had. But I have played previously of his City of Iron and The Ancient World. Those are both excellent games. Unfortunately, they both have a little bit too much kind of almost passive aggressive aggression in them. There's a there's a little bit too much conflict. So they both weren't neither of them were keepers force, but oh my god, the gameplay in them was so brilliant, so innovative. He's come up with some really great Smart, smart designs. And then on top of that, he himself is an incredibly talented artist as well. He does all the design and all the art on those previous games and some other games that, again, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of. Um, oh, what the heck. Let's go on ahead and look. That's it. I can't just mention all that and then not say what, particularly since I've messed that up in the past. Bye, Madeira. What are we looking at? Artifacts. Ryan Lockett. Previous, previously, he put out, di, di, di. oh, um, yeah, City of Iron and... All right. Oh, Eight Man Empire, which I've never played, but I really do want to play that. I hear there's nothing but great things, particularly the Legends version of it. Man, I, that's been on my want list for quite a while. And let's see. And then he had some other one too. Oh, Empires of the Void, which is apparent. You know, a lot of people really like as well. I should really check that one out. That's also in my fours on my wish list. Not quite into my threes, but um, so he's had a string of very, very well received, um, beautiful and innovative games and I've played two of them and I thought they were both brilliant just not quite right for me and Jen but that history that pedigree is what puts Artifacts Inc. as my number six it's a card game it actually went through Kickstarter in 2013 I'm sorry 2014 and it should be shipping in 2015 and it's kind of a you know uh, archaeologist searching all over the world to find all the you know the the great lost treasures of antiquity um, with cards. It's a 100% it's card game. And again, it's going to have his brilliant art. I can't wait to try it. And that's why, really, it's my number six. But now, let's move on to number five. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Thunderbirds. Now, first of all, I should say, I don't really know anything about the classic family TV show from, was it the 50s or the 60s, um, that this is based on. But, I mean, you've pr probably, even if you don't know the show, you've, you're familiar with it. You've seen it. It was, you know, kind of marionette puppets, uh, you know, a, a family of adventurers zipping all over the world trying to solve problems. Kind of like a Johnny Quest, but instead of animated with, with puppets and um, all that. Very classic, very well-loved, all around the world. And... Matt Leacock, who is one of, another one of my absolute favorite designers of all time because he designed Pandemic, is working on a cooperative game based on this franchise. And I got to say, that really tickles my fancy for a number of reasons. Um, you know, first of all, you know, I mean, Matt is brilliant. Every game he's done, um, you know, works so well. And, you know, and in fact, Pandemic, uh, you know, his, his big, big hit is uh, still in my top 10 of all time. And it's the game that made Jen and I modern designer board game fans. But, you know, if there's any complaint I have about Matt Leacock, it is that he kind of does go back to the pandemic well, maybe a little bit more than I would hope. I mean, we loved A Roll Through the Ages where he, instead of, you know, um, leveraging his, you know, the, uh, the, the design of Pandemic like he did for... Forbidden Desert and Forbidden Island. And Roll Through Ages, he did something completely different. My hope is that for this game, he comes up with something completely new and different, and he doesn't go back to the standard pandemic mechanisms. But you know what? Even if he does, if he comes up with some new twist on them, I'll still be very excited about this because, quite frankly, it's Matt Leacock, and i got to be excited. 
But we're not done with Matt Leacock. He's also going to appear a little bit later on the list. But anyway, here we are at my number five, Thunderbirds. What I think you're supposed to say, Thunderbirds go! Or Thunderbirds are a go or something like that. But again, I just sorry, I, I don't know the show as well as I should. All right, moving on to number four. Bomb Squad. Now, I've actually done a run-through for this. This is the first game of all of these that you can actually go and see. I mean, uh, because I actually got to play it at Gen Con 2014, and Tasty Minstrel Games gave me a prototype coffee, which I was able to bring back to Malta, and I played it with Jen, and we loved it. It's so much fun. Uh, it had a very successful Kickstarter campaign, and it should be coming out in 2015 as a commercial release, and I cannot wait to get my copy. Oh, I'm so excited about this. In a nutshell, this game, and again, you can go and watch the run-through to learn more. It's a real-time cooperative game, which we absolutely love, and it's a uh, Basically, all the players are members of a bomb squad trying to save various space, uh, various spots all throughout the city from bombs that are going to go off and save lots of people's lives, which is a, a lovely theme. I mean, it's just quite nice. But the way we do it is the bomb is ticking down in real time, and everybody has a hand of cards that represents intelligence they have that they've been able to find out, uh, uh, you know, about the site. You know, they, you know, they, they've got it wired for sound. They, you know, they've got snipers on the roof looking through. Um, you know, uh, their, you know, their scopes. And, um, you know, they, they've got uh, people on the phone trying to talk to the terrorists and all that. So, basically, nobody knows exactly what's going on inside the bomb site. All the players represent different members of this team, and we all have imperfect knowledge. We don't know exactly what's happening. And what that, the way that's represented, because we all just know our little bit. I know I overheard some snippet when I was, you know, um, you know eavesdropping. I, um, you know, the, 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 the guy on the roof, he saw through his binoculars somebody walk through a window. So, he has a tiny, he knows that there's somebody in that window. But nobody knows knows everything. The way that's represented is everybody has a hand of cards that are faced away from them, like Hanabi. You cannot see what cards you have in your hand. and but you, but you need to be able to smartly play these cards, because what we're doing as a group is we're trying to program a robot, a bomb defusal robot that will go in and find all the bombs and defuse them before time runs out. And we'll go in and um, rescue all the people. So, it's a very, very tense, high-stakes game where we are having to give each other clues, again, very much like Hanabi about what's in our hands, so that we can play cards correctly and program our robot so he won't just run into the building and bump into walls and get blown up with everybody else. It's a brilliant game. It, it's a wonderful fusing of several different games. Like I said, the reverse card play of Hanabi, the uh, the, the real-time cooperativeness of uh, Escape, and then also the robot programming of something like Robo Rally. All these great things come together, and Jen and I, we just... Um, absolutely love this game. Very, very excited about it. I mean, I, 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 it could almost rate higher, except for what's coming up. If, you know, if you know how much I'm excited about this, wait till you hear about number three. So let's move on to the Gallerist. Now, Designer Vito Lasarda um, is another one like uh, like several I've mentioned before who is on a roll. He can seem to do no wrong because we have loved all of his games so far. He has put out three very big, heavy, meaty, chunky Euro games: Vinos, CO2, and Kanban: The Automotive Revolution. Which Kanban actually made it into my top ten for 2014. Uh, CO2 made it into my top ten for I forget what year it was. Was it 2010? 2000? I think. Or maybe 2011, I, you know, maybe 2012. Actually, I'm not quite sure. But he has a he has a tendency to make amazing games that Jen and I absolutely love. And it's really interesting. I mean. There can come a point in a game's design where it becomes too heavy for us. It's just too much, too overwrought. And Vitel so far has done a really great job of straddling that line. If, if his games were any heavier, they'd be too heavy for us. But right now, they're in that perfect sweet spot of exactly the top end, along with games like Agricola or you know, um, uh, you know, uh, some of uh, Stefan Feld's heavier games like uh, Trajan. Absolutely love what Vitel has done so far, or Vital. And this year, he's bringing out a new heavy Euro game, which is all about, called The Gallers. And he potentially has some other ones coming out too. There's one that's uh, about um, setting up a bank heist, and one, uh, what, what, what's the other one? Oh, I can't remember the other one. Oh, now I gotta go look. I gotta go look. Oh, it's driving me nuts. All right, let's see here. You'd think I would be more prepared for this. All right, let's uh, look up 
the gallerist. So then we can look up Vital. And then there he is. Oh, look how happy he is. He's so happy when videos came out. He's such a nice guy. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, he's also, another great thing about him, he's very actively involved with the community on BGG. He's always online answering questions about his game. You know, he's definitely not a hands-off designer. Just a great, great guy all around. Let's see, what are the other ones? Sort by year published. D -d -d -d. The gallerist. Uh, da -da -da. Um, oh, escape plan, which is the one about a heist, and also Lisboa. Now, I don't know anything about those because these things do not actually have an official. You can see here you publish zero. So I'm going to leave them. All, I mean, they might have made the top 10 if somebody would have said that, hey, they're coming out in 2014 as well. But right now, I'm sorry, 2015, the gallerist, let's go back, is the only one that is officially coming out in 2015 so far. And the reason I'm excited about this, in addition to the fact that, again, Vital has just done a fantastic job so far is because I have read that this one is not going to be quite as heavy as his previous games. And that's awesome. Because like I was saying earlier, he just is right on the hairy edge of too heavy for us. And if anything, the only thing I'd like to see more from his games is maybe that they were just a smidge lighter, just a little bit less complex. Because, you know, Kanban is crazy complex, as is Venus. CO2 is my favorite game he's done so far, and it's arguably the lightest. So if Gallerist is a little bit lighter as well, well, color me excited. Love the theme of trying to run my own art gallery, you know, um, sponsoring artists, trying to get all the best people in and, you know, and have the most successful gallery. Great theme, great designer, can't wait. Number three, Gallerist. But there's even more, more exciting stuff. So let's move on to number two. Do, 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 do. Forge War. Okay, now this one, I've done a run through for this one as well. Uh, because I had a prototype for it when it was on Kickstarter in 2014. I've been saying 2014 and 2013 throughout this video because it's actually December 31st right now. So I'm not really thinking 2015 yet. I apologize. But anyway, in 2014, I did a run through for this where I, well, not quite famously, but I did notably call Forge War. What I said was at that point, which I think was June of 2014, it was the best game uh, Jen and I had played in the year so far. And a lot of people misinterpreted that to me saying, it's the best game of the year! Which, well, it kind of was because it was the best game we had played that far and we would played a lot of games already and it was easily the best. Um, now, unfortunately, it didn't come out in 2014. You know, the Kickstarter campaign was very successful and they've been, you know, they've been doing lots of regular updates for all of us backers ever since, but it's not going to be in our hot little hands until 2015. So unfortunately, it couldn't make, it would have made my top 10 games of 2014 easily. But in 2015, I'll finally have the final real commercial product instead of the kind of low rent prototype I had. And I am so excited. This game is so brilliant. It is the perfect storm of strong, wonderful Euro game design mixed with very atmospheric and dramatic Ameritrash style theme because this is a game, a high fantasy world beset with all kinds of terrible dangers, rampaging dragons and, and um, you know, undead plagues and all kinds of stuff. But we are not the adventurers who go out and solve the problems. We are um, local entrepreneurs, local businessmen who... Um, who basically run forges and try to create all the weapons that all those adventurers need to go out and solve all those problems. And um, so we, at any given time in this game, we are running three different things. We have our mining operation, which is a very, very cool kind of abstract puzzle game where we're, um, you know, we're kind of jockeying in the local mine to get all the best resources possible. Then we've actually got our crafting game where we're taking those resources and trying to make the cool best, most epic weapons full of really cool special powers that you've ever seen. And then on top of that, there's the adventuring phase. Because um, we are actually the guys who hire mercenary adventurers to come and solve all the problems, and then we outfit them with our equipment. And then we get all the glory for them saving the day. So it's got this one, two, three structure that is absolutely brilliant. Incredibly heavy, incredibly deep, um, really, really high quality components, and just so much fun. Um, um, you know, it's a three-hour game the, when we played it, you know, the prototype we had. And they've since done some more tweaking to the rules. So I'm very excited to see all the evolution the rules have gone through since then. But three hours, uh, three plus hours is incredibly long. Jen and I very rarely are patient enough to play a game for that long. But this game, we could play it that long and then immediately want to play it again a second time. It was that good.
So it's um, made my number two at this point, as of January 1st, most anticipated game for 2015. Which means there's something that's even more anticipated. More anticipated than Forge War, which would have made my top 10 guaranteed of 2014. What could it be? Well, if uh, you've been paying attention, you've already gotten one clue. Because I haven't mentioned Matt Leacock's other game. So let's talk about it. My number one most anticipated game, Pandemic Legacy. How could this not be my most anticipated game? Oh my god. Gosh, I am so I am quivering with excitement for this game. I'm not going to spend much time talking about what Pandemic is. Everybody should know. I've done a run through for Pandemic. If you don't know, in a nutshell, it is a cooperative game where players are all members of the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, jet setting all around the world, racing against time, trying to stop the spread of infectious diseases and save the world from a pandemic outbreak of these all these different viruses. It's very cool, very exciting, um, wonderful, wonderful game. We love it. We've loved every expansion that's come out for it. I mean, it's it's still, it's in my top 10 games of all time. Um, and now, in 2015, if it comes out, now, I think it's, personally, I think it's kind of a long shot. I bet you this game is going to go long because this game is actually being designed by Matt Leacock, the designer, and he is collaborating with um, Rob Davero, I think is his name. I better look that up now, too. Hold on a second. Let's close the other tab. Open the new tab. Um, actually, I met him at uh, yeah yeah uh, uh, yeah Rob Davio or Rob Davio. I'm not quite sure who designed the excellent Risk Legacy and basically created an entirely new genre of game called Legacy games. And these are games where. Um, you, you, you get out the game, you play it, you have a great time, but based on what happened during that session of play, the game itself fundamentally changes. New rules get added. Um, you know, new abilities become available. Um, elements, you know, places on the board get completely destroyed and wiped out, never to be seen again. And so, based on what happens when you and I play, I, I sit down and play a session of, of a legacy game, the game will be changed permanently forever. And after we've played that game 20 times, we will have a copy of the game that is unlike anybody else's in the world. It will be personalized and the world will have changed and evolved based on our impact as players. And to me, that is so meaningful. That is so fulfilling. That sense of permanence. And um, so you know, Rob, uh, you know, Risk Legacy is amazing, but unfortunately it's a three-player game and so we'll never get a chance to play it. Plus it's Risk, ugh, whatever. Rob is actually doing another game that's going to be on a lot of people's top 10 most anticipated games of 2015 called um, Seafall, which is taking, taking the Legacy formula and applying it to a 4x game you know which is expand exploit uh, exterminate and expand exploit Oh, and explore, explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. You know, one of those types of games where you're basically kind of building your own little financial empire all around the world as you explore. Um, Seafall is basically, I guess, set in the era of a colonization. And that would make my top 10 most anticipated games if it didn't require three players. But it does, so it's dead to me and Jen, so whatever. But he is working with Matt on bringing that legacy formula to Pandemic, my favorite co-op of all time. And I can't wait. I cannot wait for the... Um, you know, how well did we stop the spread in Mozambique? Oh my gosh, Mozambique got totally overrun in future games? I don't know. Does that mean Mozambique is literally removed, is a, is a permanent hotspot that can never be cured now, and it changes the rules? I don't know what they're going to do, but whatever it is, I am so excited. I am beside myself with enthusiasm, and I, I just can't wait. Fingers crossed it comes out. My only worry about Pandemic Legacy is it will be so amazing that I will never go back and play Pandemic again, that it will replace regular Pandemic. It's interesting. There's actually, uh, I think if I, if I scroll down past the 10, there is a Pandemic expansion coming out as well. Yeah, it's my number 14. Well, again, past 10, the, um, 11 through 70, they are not in any kind of order. They are just, they're literally not in alphabetical order, not in, um, you know, in any kind of order at all. But Pandemic State of Emergency, I'm excited for that too, but it's not my top 10. And it's interesting, if Pandemic Legacy works out well enough, I might not even be interested in Pandemic enough to get the expansion. Who knows what's going to happen? But anyway, folks, that's it. That was my number one most anticipated game for 2015 as of right now, January 1st, is Pandemic Legacy. Okay, folks, that's the run-through. 
Thanks for watching very much. Again, um, the link for this geek list is in the show notes down below. Definitely go there. And if you like, subscribe to this. You'll have to have a, an account on Board Game Geek, but believe me, it's well worth it to um, subscribe to this because I will be keeping this updated probably once every week or two. Um, I update this with all the latest games I've heard about, and I write up a little thing about why I'm interested in it. Uh, there's always a lot of really good discussion on this thread. A lot of time, the designers see this thread, and they'll come in, and, and they'll give us advanced information. Uh, about it. It's uh, you know, it's, it's something I really enjoy doing throughout the year. So definitely go and subscribe if you like. And if you want to know about other games that aren't on this list, you can click right here and see my wish list of all games because there's a lot of them out there that I'd really like as well. Everything ranked as a number four doesn't make it into my games of interest, but it doesn't mean I'm not interested. It just means I'm not sure. Everything on my games of interest, I'm pretty sure I want to play it. I want to have it in my hands. Um, so it's it's kind of, it's a big deal to make it onto this list. Let's see. Oh, also, everything that's a number... Well, it hardly matters. But that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, concerns, as always, please let me know. I'm always happy to answer any questions. And otherwise, I am going to thank you for watching. And once again, wish you a very, very happy new year. Um, and that's it. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.